Okay, so first thing they want is the slope. You can use the formula if you would like, but I would just do the pattern. It's getting bigger by 8, smaller by 4. 8 over negative 4 is negative 2. That's my slope. So the slope of AB is negative 2. Okay. Find the equation. So in order to get the equation, I need M and I need B. So I'm going to go Y equals MX plus B. There's my M. I'm going to pick the first point, plug it into my x and my y. So my y, my m, my x, my b. I have my m, I have my b. Here's the equation in slope intercept form. Now, if I were you, I would check your answer. I would go negative 2 times negative 8. Don't check the same point, because if you use the same point and you made a mistake, you won't find it. So negative 2 times negative 8 is 16. 16 minus 7 is 9, so I know I'm good. Okay? Find the midpoint. Now, I'm telling you right now, midpoint is something that you learned in geometry. There's a logical way to do it, and there's a formula. You know I'm going to do the logical way. So one thing I could do is I could plot negative 4, 1. And I could plot negative 8, 9, and then figure out the halfway. So we know that halfway, and then you could probably see it that way. I'm kind of a visual person, so when I see it, I'm going to still lay it like this. But this time, I'm trying to figure out what's in between negative 4 and negative 8. So I'm going to go negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. I'm literally going to play the midpoint game. A lot of you saw it was negative 6, but I want you to see that you don't have to be able to see it. You could just write out the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and play the midpoint game. Boom. So you have negative 6 and 5, so the midpoint is negative 6, comma 5. The other one is finding the distance. The distance is also a formula that you learned in geometry. And that's when you, I think it was like the square root of blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's just annoying. You know I don't like formulas. But I do like what I did with the graph over here. So I'm going to redraw my graph, but just a little nicer. So negative 4, 1. Negative 8, 9. The distance is how long it is from here to here. Well, I know that if I make a triangle, I know the Pythagorean theorem, and yes, it's another formula, but it's an easier formula for me to remember. So from negative 4 to negative 8 is 4. Sorry, that pen doesn't work so well. Let me switch out. So I know that from here to here is 4. And then if you look, the distance from 1 to 9 is 8. So I'm going to do the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 16 plus 64 equals c squared. 80 equals c squared, square root, square root. Okay? Therefore, my distance is rad 80, square root of 80. Now, you did learn how to simplify the radical. So if that ends up happening and you get a radical, and you remember how to simplify it, I'll give you bonus. So let me remind you, that's when you did your tree. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. You circle the doubles. 2 times 2 is 4. What you didn't circle goes on the radical. So if you give me 4 rad 5, you get bonus. But if you keep it square root of 80, you're fine. All right. Parallel. Parallel means the same slope. Well, if we're doing the same slope, we know the slope is negative 2. We take the point. And we do exactly what we did up here. My y, my m, my x, b. 4 equals 20 plus b, minus 20, minus 20. b equals negative 16. y equals negative 2x, minus 16. I'm just going to double check. I went fast. Negative 2 times negative 10 is 20. 20 minus 16 is 4. I'm good. Perpendicular. 
Perpendicular means I'm going to take the slope, but I have to do the opposite and then flip it. This is my new n. Now this problem is just like this one, where I take this, I do the y equals mx plus b, y, m, x. I'm doing a video. Just give me 10. 4 equals negative 5 plus b plus 5 plus 5. b equals 9. So now y equals 1 half x plus 9. Let me just double check. Half of negative 10 is negative 5 plus 9 is 4. So I'm good to go unless I don't know how to find perpendicular. Okay, so with this, can you do me a favor and pretend that it goes forever? All right, x-intercepts. The x-intercept is where it crosses on the x-axis. Boom, boom, boom. You need to write it as points. 3 comma 0, negative 2 comma 0, and negative 4 comma 0. And when you're writing the zeros or the roots, 3, negative 2, negative 4, doesn't matter the order. Okay, for the y-intercept, this was just like the homework problem. I didn't put any lines, so we'll fake it, okay? Let's say that's 4. We're faking it. It won't be like this on the test. So 0, 4, that's your y. Okay, the relative maximum. The relatively speaking, this is the maximum, but if you look, it keeps going up and up and up. So technically, there is no max because it goes to positive infinity. Okay, so keep that in mind. The relative minimum, relatively speaking, this is low, but this is the lowest. We're going to fake that and say that's at negative 2. So that's negative 3, negative 2. So relatively speaking, this is the relative minimum. And that, that's the minimum. Because it's not that there's no minimum. That really is it. Okay, the intervals where it is increasing. So remember, that's the x values, okay? Now, this is where I'm going, and here's the truth, because I know that I messed up a little bit. It's really from over here, which is negative infinity, all the way to negative 3. And that's where it's going down. But if you put positive infinity, that's okay with me for now. Then it's going from negative 3 to 0, negative 3 to 0, that's where it's increasing. Now remember, as long as you clearly label things, I'll be good to go. Then it's going decreasing from 0 to 3, and then it's going from 3 to positive infinity. Okay? All right, domain. Domain is everything to the right and everything to the left. Well, it's pointing to the right and it's pointing forever to the left. All real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. The range. The range is everything up and everything down. Well, if you look, it's pointing up. If it's pointing up, that means greater than or equal to. Well, what is range? Y. Well, what is the lowest point? The lowest point is at negative 2. We have that in set notation. It goes from negative 2 to positive infinity, parentheses, it's included, brackets. Okay? All right. Domain and range, in set and interval notation, and determine if it's a function. I'm going to do the function one first. Okay? It is a function. It only touches once. So the answer is yes, it touches once. Okay? So that's the function. Let's assume this goes forever, please. The domain, domain is everything to the right and everything to the left. It's forever to the right, forever to the left. The domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, the range is everything up and everything down. Well, it only points up, greater than or equal to. What letter is that? Y. Now, what is that lowest value? The lowest value is 0, 4. I don't care about the 0. It's my x. I want the y. I realize that's very similar to the previous one. Careful. I'm telling you right now, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. These could be any types of shapes. They could be a rectangle. They could be going like this. They could be going like this. 
So be aware of that. Don't just focus on these two in isolation. Go back and look at all the other domains and ranges and make sure you can understand, okay? Um, all right, so then I'm going positive 4 included to positive infinity. Please study.